Hi everybody. Uh, I want to make a comment about uh, a post I just saw where uh, basically it said that the least educated out of the least educated um, states uh, in the Union, a certain number, uh, a majority of them uh, prefer Trump or something to this effect. I don't remember exactly what what it said and it sounded a little mean but you know there is a little bit of truth to the notion that uh, supporting uh, supporting the system supporting um, uh, values according to um, you know based on the power of money capitalism and so forth creates for a, a, a population that is generally less wise or less quote-unquote intelligent than people from the Marxist or socialist or humanist um, political current. And there's a, there's a reason for this. Uh, and before I explain it, I, I first want to um, propose that we are that we become able to split the political field in two general tendencies that we see happening in Europe, in South America, in the United States, in China, and everywhere. And those two general areas are basically about um, the power of corporation, capitalism, right wing, um, institutional authority. Okay, that's a tricky one, but mainly capitalism. Let's just let's just generalize it that way. And uh, on the left, we have the Marxist, socialist, uh, communist, uh, and all this other uh, political tendency or school of thought. In general areas, we can, however you define it, however whatever labels or names or uh, political party names you use, you can you or or just let's just try to do that let's just try to split the political landscape in two general areas and once you do that and you have an idea of who's where and what you've seen in your life and happening in other countries on one side and on the other you can start describing characterization of of, of typically how these people are and indeed what you find is more um, sort of more euphoric uh, atomacy and even a little bit of cruelty or hardness on the right and more uh, sort of emotional um, um, hu sort of appeal to to humanist values and and, and principle and everything about the equality of society and the quality of life and education and and you know the left for example is supporting uh, free uh, public or free uh, available to everybody because that's what free means what when when the political party says free what they're saying is so that there's no longer disparity or classes or people that are better able to access uh, health and education than others so that some people because they're rich cannot access the finer levels of private education and while, while others have to go and, and be the uh, take uh, take uh, um, educate themselves through the run of the mill kind of which in reality is not necessarily so much like that but basically that's what free means the same thing for uh, medical and we should also be thinking about the same thing in, in legal in the you know the the, the law should be absolutely um, a social matter of professionals that, that are equally distributed among... But in any case, what I'm getting at is that it's understandable and, and, and easy to see why these two tendencies are characterized the way they are. Caring for the system to be your workhorse, capitalism, the power of material, material um, gain and the strength of corporation it's all about the artifact the invention of system of the engineering of uh, of um, of the civilization 
and the invention of money, for example. And human nature, and the, the deepest part of our, our nature is, of course, our, our deep, very embedded, primitive desire to escape the suffering of existence, the suffering of living. That's just how our mind has, has, been, has been formed by evolution and the suffering of life, of life and our necessity uh, uh, creating almost a desperation to survive. And so we are inherited, inherit, we inherit fear, suspicion, worry, uh, because it, that important is for evolution, for life to succeed. And so in order to survive, we're always aware of the dangers of existence. And so that's a whole other subject right there. Uh, but in any case, that being our, our defining uh, psychological, naturally psychological, natural psychological landscape, the instrument is like the rope that you finally got your, your hand on to pull you out of the water. And so we're desperate because it seems like the, as long as you work and have money, you can save. Life can be easy, in other words. As long as you, you have a system of, of corporations and capitalism. And, you know, and so we're, what we're seeing, for example, is that as long as we have a, a strong police force that can keep criminals under uh, in check with the power of weaponry, uh, I won't have to confront the difficulty and the toiling of life, is what's happening subconsciously. Well, the, on the other side, what we have is a predominance of, of, of caring for social values, for uh, for everybody to reap in the benefits of uh, the ingenuity of human civilization, for uh, for there not to be fighting between different classes and the problems, the social problems that arise between uh, class cap gaps and um, elitism and so forth in society. And so what you have is on the left, the generally defined left, is more intellectual because the, it is more requiring of a deeper comprehension and wisdom to understand the human condition and 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 the wrongs and the uh, and the the right the the necessities of human existence or the human mind and so marxism was was born out of intellectualism for example that understood the the, the social problems of capitalism and so they said well you know all these problems the oligarchs and the uh, uh, the oligarchy taking everything for themselves and keeping the workers oppressed and so forth that Marx was talking about has to do with it's, it's an intellectual elaboration this doesn't happen on the right the right is not a, a, an intellectual endeavor it is simply about Give me the buck. <laughs> Give me the, 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 the way that I can safely step into a, a, an abundant and proliferous existence. Uh, these, this is provoked by human nature, in other words. It's provoked by our necessity to avoid the difficulty and the suffering or the fears of, of life. And so it is, we're very attracted to We want to grab on to that that engineering structure which is the financial uh, comprehension of life you know have a job pay pull your own weight with your own earnings and then you see something that is sort of a, a rope or a life vest that will take you out of the the ambiguity of, of deep comprehension towards our existential condition and whereas on the on the left you have something completely different happening and this is happening uh, this has always happened, and 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 these, if you if you uh, analyze it in terms of these two general areas, and also what that tells you is that the um, these two areas of of political thinking, these two families of thought, are 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 the result of having taken a route within the same human psyche. In other words. Uh, uh, one aspect of the psyche's existential experience has produced one um, one tendency of thought in politics, and another path of the same human psyche concerning other aspects of existence have produced the other uh, area of intellectual philosophy. So really, 
there, it makes no sense that we treat it as an opposition of, of equals, of two things that are combating and competing against each other. There's actually no, no sense for that to be happening. We're kind of stuck in that. That's why we're stuck. Because it, that would have no resolution in reality. And yes, it is true that uh, we are becoming dumber by thinking in terms of having to enforce logic upon human existence telling us how uh, that w as long as you work and, and you make your company grow and think of sexuality this way and and these of, of course it spills over so now the left um, you know it's funny because before in the states there was a while uh, a moment where abortion was more on the side of the right and now it's shifted to the left in other countries more so than not so obvious in the United States um, so, you know, to understand this subject matter that I'm trying to, uh, you know, that I'm trying, that I just dove into, you have to think of it in terms of this two, um, this spectrum of, of, of two tendencies that are different areas of the mind's production be because of human existence, and also that... Um, something else is making them travel um, because there is there one way or the other depending on on something that is possibly right now too hard to even try to understand but um, it is important that we understand though that thinking of the the social life of a country in terms of uh, the 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 financial mechanisms of living will bring uh, decrease the, uh, a lessening a a constant decrease of social of of wise, wise intelligence. In other words, if I think politically in terms of what society needs in order for people to get along, for everybody to have the same opportunities. Um, in the terms of val emotional value and necessity, or emotional necessity, uh, in, in, in this area, then I will be wiser in understanding the human condition, how human beings are, what happens to society, what the, what are the dynamics that happen in the collective. But if my um, intel intellectual growth is based on having systems explain how we have to live and logical explanations to what ends up affecting the way our families live, the way we raise our children, we grow up or we relate to one another. If we apply logical, ideological principles to, for example, a relationship between our parents, what, for example, in sexuality, what have we have done? What have we done? Where a parent and the friends of the father and the, and the friends of the family and the family itself would naturally already understand human sexual development in the species. We were already owning of, of, of homosexuality as it can occur to, en to anyone that has human sexuality, which is all of us. And we were having ideas already about why it happens, and, you know, sometimes we didn't, but we were more sincere. We didn't understand, but we didn't like it, made us uncomfortable, and so there, there were problems of rejection and so forth. But when we decided that homosexuality is a, a civil category, a right to live your life according to uh, principles, civil principles of, in, uh, of individual freedom rights, individual freedom rights, human rights, and so we idealized, we ideologicalized um, the, 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 those areas of sexuality that we didn't quite understand entirely what we've done and then we, we you know people will always have the question they will want to understand what happens to us <laughs> or why things happen to us as a collective as a society and so what they have now to understand our own sexuality is what being is what being is what is being explained through uh, ideological civil intellectuality or political uh, guidelines and things that you know, it would seem to resolve the situation, but in reality, it makes us less wise and less profoundly understanding of our own physiology. 
And so we make a dumber society by telling us how to think about our own body. And the same thing goes with politics. We make a dumber society if you think that life is about making a machine work. And so you learn all the parts of this capitalistic machine, but you really start becoming poorer with time in terms of what the dynamics are uh, between the different relationships, friendship, family, and what will that would cause in the work, all the, where humanity comes into civilization, family, school, workplace. And we have to think of situations of different levels of friendship, of uh, relationships that happen in those areas. We, we become um, less savvy, less understanding, uh, or, and, and we're less able to predict what a human being will react like because we become less educated in how we, we really are through, uh, through, through educated through experience of how we really are. What we do is we start educating ourselves on how to think. Think about your uh, about women this way, about a, a pregnancy this way. Think about uh, administrating a country, which is could be a much more organic uh, understanding in a political sense. But we have turned it really into a machinery. It's all about hours of work and taxes, and we don't stop talking about how the corporations need to stop, 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 you know, stay strong. And so, with the time, with the passing of generations, what we see is a population that becomes more superficial, more about instant gratification, more about pleasures and things that don't mean any just instant gratification. And, and then when they try to uh, make uh, intelligent arguments, social arguments of, that have to do with our own real, physical, unchangeable physiology, you, you know, you hear people just make outlandish assertions or they just don't know and they don't care. And this is what happens. So, um, I'm not saying that we all need to also abandon capitalism and become Marxist, social, socialist, humanist-minded. But we need to understand that we're probably missing this, the, the central point. We have been split into two camps. We are all about taking sides and, and, and fighting out a, a, some kind of uh, war, uh, some kind of uh, team sport, war, or something in politics, and we're not really caring, we're, again, here, we're because we be relegated this to a confrontation of two, of who to hate, who's on what side, and, and what's better and what's worse, we are becoming less savvy in so far as what a nation needs to maintain its quality of life, for all the things that are important about living in a society, and as a population, we, we don't talk anymore about things that are very human, like, for example, how, how well are we speaking English <laughs> in our country? <laughs> when was the last time anybody spoke about that? Oh, now my computer wants to have a... I'm about to get blocked. My computer wants to do some auto, automated cleaning or service or something. Okay, so, okay, I think I made my point. Uh, we are becoming less aware and less empowered also to say, well, given what is important for a country, the Democrats or the right side has some points, but really they're not even paying attention to all of this, and the left side, did I say right or left before? I don't remember. The left side, um, you know, are caring about all these things, and nobody's listening to them. We're not able to create a... A, an agenda of, 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 uh, of necessities, a list of priorities for our country because we're, we're, we're so occupied with who's right of these two uh, polar sides. It's sort of like uh, being um, handcuffed by the, the, the fight of duality and therefore we don't see, we can't walk because instead of walking, choo you know, walking with some kind of harmony uh, using our two legs, going towards nation, which is moving forward, you know, knowing what a nation needs, thinking about the, regardless of politics, regardless of who's in government, these are the things that need to get done first. I don't care what kind of government, what kind of, what, politi what party, you know, this is what, who's taking care of this? Is anybody taking care of this, you know? Uh, we're not even, we can't, we're no longer there. We don't care, um, 
the things that are about our human aspects, uh, human existential uh, quality of life, you know, uh, we don't know, we can't resolve any of our problems, our social problems, criminology and violence is, we think that it's about applying the principle of, have, of having a right to have a gun. And so we're, we have these ideas that uh, we'll be freer or more or less free if we have or not have the right. For, but we're not really understanding the, we're not talking anymore about the, uh, the, how the, the problem of gun violence has grown. We really don't understand how it has gotten worse. We don't, we have become inept. We're unable to understand how, uh, what has brought, and one of the reasons is that because we're stuck in this polarity combative situation, that as soon as anybody says, wait, you know, that understands what I'm saying, for example, and says, well, wait, let's understand exactly how we came to get worse when it comes to gun violence and criminality and so forth. All of a sudden, that person may say something that to to the public sounds like, "Oh, he's taking a right side." That's only that's now you're being a commie, or now you're being a right wing fanatical liberal capitalist. Instead of seeing the element that that has to be understood along with every the complex um, explanation that that person is about to deliver explaining how we got this problem so to be so bad he can't even make it because everybody who's listening only hears is it that side or is it that side they stop him they interrupt him and nobody becomes any wiser any more intelligent about the human condition and the human dynamics that we create through our society irrelevant and irregardless uh, to what political side you're on, and th this is in, this is happening not just in the states. This is happening in in, in, in people are the people in power who are beyond this situation. They exploit this because they they use, for example, uh, Evo Morales was actually Bolivia was the poorest, uh, less respected country of all of for all of Latin Americans. You know. Oh, you know, you can always say, well, at least we're not Bolivia, right? Well, look at this man. All of a sudden, countries are starting to talk around the world about Bolivia getting better, and they, they, they started building some transportation infrastructure, and they actually started becoming a better country. But we didn't like the fact that American, corporate America did not have political power within the country. And so, wouldn't you know that Everybody was in on it. The OAS, the, 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 now, how was that possible? How were they? Were, uh, how was the world able to extract a country that saved his nation from from being a, a tethered, uh, you know, backwards uh, place, uh, and and substituted with people who are actually oppressing their instructing their police to use firepower against democratic protesters because that that desperate and this is what I mean about capitalism not being the brightest they just want to be saved themselves they want the system they want that rope they want to be able to secure to see something that to them does the math and being able to main preserve Guaido their social class and so the, this is the uh, the addiction or the lure of, of, of corporate capitalism. And um, everybody is, if you listen to everybody, they're all going along. The narrative, not just because uh, our president is feeding it to the medias or our government or some of our politicians. Sometimes I feel like we're in the far west. You know, we're still blah, 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 saying the same. We sound exactly the same that John Wayne did in, you know, in some movie. You know, um, Cubans are bad. You know, this, anyways. No, we don't, we don't talk about human values. We don't understand how, how reasonable it was for there to be a revolution in Cuba when the United States was, was, was dominating it dominating its economy 
Every nation wants to be free. Every nation wants to govern its own destiny. It's understandable that there would be a revolution in Cuba, given how the United States would... But we, are be, we become dumb. We no longer know how to talk about that, for example. We don't know how to understand the human condition. We don't talk at the human level. We don't understand anymore. We don't justify, the, we don't see the, reason, the reasonableness of, of things that happen in history because it all is, it's all a narrative that is constructed. And so that, of course, because we want to be saved, we grab on to explanations that are easy to wield and explanations that can easily uh, place us on the winning side. And uh, we totally exploited that in Bolivia. The, the journalism, everybody's, everybody's in, the, in the same rapture of, of this situation. Everybody is uh, responding to the same need to be saved by the security of a, of a corporate, strong, powerful, uh, well, um, you know, articulated, mechanical, kinetic uh, capitalism or corporate institution or what have you. And so they all sell out. The uh, journalism, <laughs> uh, uh, our politicians, people in Congress, we're seeing, you know, it makes no sense, for example, when you, you think about, we have the disparity. We've been talking about the how, how 1% or 8% or 10% or 0.1%, whatever, the people hold uh, 80, 90% of all the wealth and power that there is for the country. And this just does not seem to take on the, the significance when uh, to the people. They don't, it's all like they don't know what they're, he they, they can't understand what they're hearing almost. You have a, a, you would think that when somebody finally, people, one or two people in, in, a, in, a, in a political party start saying, one, one of the main things that I want is for that excess and uh, absurd, uh, abominable disproportion to be leveled off, to spread it out among the many people. We have millions of people that are destitute in poverty, um, and um, cultural poverty is, is really our problem in America. We have people that they may have a new pair of tennis shoes that they got at Walmart, and they may... But you know they don't. Their life does not consist of any more than than their uh, daily fights and using drugs and, and um, you know and, 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 and obtaining pleasure, hanging out with their their social entourage. <laughs> you know the, there is no cultural dynamics. We have that's that's America's poverty. We're poor. We're poor in the sense of we're just being fed. We're like being maintained, and we try to pass the time with with uh, entertainment and we we love sensationalism and you know and so we don't see this mass this the sea of people uh benefiting from just lowering that a little bit just bringing that down that one percent chopping off the top uh ten percent of of the wealthiest people in america just just so like Imagine visually like a model just slicing that top off. All those people up there, their lives would not change. They would still have their yachts. They would still have their, their house in, I was going to say Martha's Vineyard, sorry. Uh, <laughs> they would still have their, their estates. You know, they just wouldn't have all that extra. They don't know what to do with, basically. You know, and on the other side, we would have all of a sudden people, a whole see a people who are down here rise a significant amount where they're all of a sudden start thinking, hey, maybe I can go to school. Maybe I can put something together. Maybe I can finally help my mother or my father or my grandparents or maybe I can, I can help my brother. Um, you know, I can do something with him and I'll, I'll bring some money to the table and he will bring me into his... So all these things would start happening. Just by... And nobody sees that. We... We, you see that, you know, this is, this is what breaks my heart and fascinates me at the same time about uh, social media, Facebook, and internet, is that you, you actually see like a window into the thinking of the populace and the speed in which so easily 
people miss things that were opportunities that appeared for the world and they immediately cast them down and start um, they demote them to oh it's just a kami you know I hear the I, I read these people it's just unbelievable they, they don't see opportunities and they just pass by one after the other of you know but uh, we grab on desperately to what we think will, and that's why money basically gets the best of human nature. Money in itself is nothing. It's just an instrument that would be very, very useful and practical, and in, in, in bring fluidity to to the the engineering and the and the uh, the um, the uh, the inventions of human civilization to everybody quickly you know it's it's like a it's like Greece money is a wonderful invention but it's also it's it knocks on the door of our deepest fears and worries and preoccupations uh, about our existence and so that's why people be, you know you have money and you know you will never your mind your subconscious primitive mind is think I will no longer suffer I will no longer suffer I will no longer be hungry I will never get sick I will pay for the best doctor in the world. I will, you know, nothing, nothing of the bad things that everybody comes to live in this existential condition in the world will happen if I have money. And so, of course, people grab onto it with both hands. And it's very hard. People become nasty when you threaten them to lose, even if their lives logically will not change a single bit. There's something very primitive that makes us grab onto money. It's almost like, the person that uh, got scared by sharks <laughs> in the ocean and then, you know, has some kind of problem or trauma or issue or, and then years later you go to a place in the beach, in, off France or Italy or Spain in the Mediterranean where I don't think there ever was a shark attack, maybe once. Uh, and you tell them to walk in the water and they go, no, I'm not going to walk in the water. Well, that's like the person says, no, I'm not going to uh, compromise anything that might uh, do anything that might compromise my financial security because they see it as security. Yeah? And why do they see it as security? Financial security. Catch word. Catch phrase. Okay. Anyways, so we need to stop the... Okay, I'm out of focus. Come on. We need to stop the the fight of, of the team, uh, two camps of politics fight, and we need to concentrate on what kind of issues we want whatever government wins to take care of, and that has to be the priority. We cannot be the country with the most... The country that was... Um, professing to be most progressive and advanced in civil values, and which means human sciences and understanding of uh, sociology and we're professing all those things when we say we uh, have the best political system and we have the best quality of life socially and all this stuff that America uh, keeps uh, supporting and keeps sustaining as the reason to get rid of dictators and other political systems right and at the same time the country that most brutally incarcerates its own citizens not just the biggest prison population in the country but the country that most uh, most thinks that amount of years must equal whatever crime was committed we don't think in terms of uh, the social conditions that create that problem and trying to cure yes you know do something about this person that did whatever but we don't prioritize this problem cannot continue. We have to solve that. We have to heal that in the, in the social fabric of the country. No, we just want to look for people. It, it all results in amount of years and amount of people in jail. It's almost like cleaning the bad ones. It's, it's the most unsophisticated, unmodern, <laughs> uh, brutal mentality as, as of a judicial system. We have no values that, for example, some countries have in their constitution say so, you know prison that say prison is not to be used as a way to punish people it's a way to have a person recuperate 
have them think about what they did and come try to bring him back to society as quickly as possible which which is normal <laughs> that's the natural thing that any human being would want for themselves and for the people they love <laughs> Uh, no, not us. We we feel we we gotta separate. We gotta uh, look for who to blame and give him as many years as possible and scare people to not do that by seeing how how brutal we can be with it. This is the most modern country in the world. We actually think that we're the most modern country in the world. No, it's time to think twice and think about what we actually want our country to be, not see who's winning the fight and, and you know who we can blame or who we can um, name call <laughs> uh, so that we feel that we're not one of them, you know, we really have to become uh, more sensitive and sensible and socially wise and co co here, uh, cohes, co uh, bring cohesion to, uh, to, to our social fabric uh, again and make a culture of people who are wise, who are directing the, the course of their country, and, and political systems are serving that. They have to win, they have to convince us that they can satisfy those arguments that we want to resolve. <laughs> we don't, we, you know, another thing that's so funny because we talk about voting the people we want in demo democracy. In reality, we don't. We, we, we choose who is given to us, the choices that are given to us, uh, candidates make themselves, put themselves in a position where we uh, end up deciding if it's going to be him or him or the other person. Uh, but we don't actually uh, draw out the people we want to see lead our country, which is what a, a pure democracy should be. We should search and scan for the the right people, the the, the ones that we like and who's who has who have original thoughts, who who are more intelligent than what we can be as a collective nation, uh, and then you know bring them out, encourage them to run. <laughs> you know, we kind of do that sometimes. Ouch, my! And have good cheap dental care. I don't understand why it's so hard for all countries. To care about dentistry, have you ever thought? Have you? You go wherever you go, wherever you go, you might be able to get your arm, you know, put a cast on if you break it instantly at an emergency room anywhere in the world, and all of a sudden find yourself with good health care. But if it comes to your teeth, have you look around? Look around the poor areas or the middle class areas of all our cities in the West. You see tons of people with bad teeth. How is this not important? Do you know how much it hurts to walk around with a cavity, with with an infection, you can't sleep, you, you scream in pain? But we don't seem to connect the dots there. We don't seem to realize our teeth are very important. They're important for our presence. People don't hire you. If you it's point blank. They don't hire you for a job if your front tooth is all crooked, dirty, and the other one is missing. Forget it. We don't want to admit it, but you know it's true. And so, the pain, the suffering, the importance, the health, the, the success in, in the workplace, all of these things should have uh, prioritized dentistry in the medical field, uh, resulting in it being really affordable, if not paid by the state, including cosmetic. This is an important aspect of our body. And yet, for some reason, and, uh, and you know, I don't want to blame capitalism, but the way the system works, and for whatever reason the profession practices, it has, you know, most countries, for example, have a rule where the state will only cover, you know, for a, 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 a problem, an emergency, an extraction, and then they, they send you off without a tooth anymore, <laughs> with a, and the state paid for it. Thank you very much. You know, but when it comes to substituting the teeth that they took out, oh, now you gotta just become rich. If you want those teeth back, you have to become rich. And this is not just happening in the states, but in many countries. And I suspect, with my little tiny little brain, 
I suspect that the, the machinery and the, the functioning of capitalism, of, of profit and marketing and publicity, you know, marketing and publicity, I don't know, okay, this is going to become a two-hour video instead of 41-minute video. Um, if I go there. All right. Bye, everybody.